back to my channel guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. This is going to be the second video in my summer series. So yeah, this video is going to be all about having a party for visually impaired guests. So I'm going to give you a few tips on how to accomplish that. Number one is to hold it during the daytime. Yeah. Number two is obviously to go on from the first tip, lots of light. We like light. That may sound strange but you know. Tip number three is to not have any candles or soft lighting. Mainly because if you have candles, we could knock them over or they could get, you know, flames. Not a good match. Tip number four is to give us a guided tour. You know, here's where you'll be sitting, here's the tables, here's the party area, you know, so on and so forth. Tip number five is to give us a floor plan. So just in case we forget, you know, this is where this is, at least we have our floor plan or someone to tell us that this is where something is, you know, just as a reference. Tip number six is to have clean floor and spaces because, yeah, we don't want to be walking into anything. Tip number seven would be to mark out if the floor dips or, you know, yeah. Tip number eight is the same more or less as tip number seven, which is to have level floors. Tip number nine, sorry I'm losing my mind, tip number nine is to have pathway markings so that we know where the pathway starts and ends. And tip number ten is to have no floor signs, for instance wet floors or, do you know what I mean? Because trust me, the last time I walked into a wet floor sign, it ended about a mile away from where I was actually standing. Yeah, you know, I teach people not to put them there. Tip number 11 is to have yellow floors. This sounds strange, but yeah, if you add, if you, no. Tip number 11 is to have yellow floors. This is going to sound really, really strange, but if you're having it at that sort of time where it's not quite day, but it's not quite yet night time, the yellow sort of fluoresces a little bit and sort of brings up the light of the flooring. It sounds totally, totally mad, but trust me, it works. Tip number 12 is to have all the seating around the edges rather than having it, you know, here's a table here, there's a table there, you know, tables strewn out everywhere. If you have them all around the edges, there's less chance that someone's going to walk into them. Tip number 13 is to make sure that everyone knows where everything is. Mainly that's because if we can't remember that so and so's here or so and so's there, then we can ask the person next to us or the person on our table to, you know, is it here, is it there? Yeah. Tip number 14 is to show us where the bar is. If you're having drinks, then yeah, obviously it shows where the bar is because the last thing that we want to be doing is pestering someone to go get us a drink or do you know where this is? So yeah. And then tip number 15 is to have plastic glasses. Mainly because if, yeah, if we spill something, then it's not that much big of a deal because if we spill something and it's a proper glass then loud crashing noise followed by glass everywhere great big chaos plastic glasses it's just a plastic cup that's fallen on the ground tip number 16 is to label foods mainly because we don't want to be asking everyone is this chicken is this fish is this that is this this yeah it's just a lot easier tip number 17 is coloured plates yeah Mainly because if there isn't people around, then we know, you know, that this plate's this and this plate's that, and yeah, it's just easier for us. Tip number 18 is subtle music. The last thing that we want is really loud music so we can't talk or, you know, because if we need to know where something is, we don't want to be shouting it halfway across the room or halfway across the room because there's so much music and do you know what I mean? Tip number 19 is to always have the bathroom lights on. You know, if you're doing it during the daytime and the nighttime, mainly because that way we can associate the light with the bathroom. Yeah. And then the last and final tip, which is tip number 20, is if there's children about or there's going to be a children's area, warn us because trust me, I've been at a lot of summer parties where there's children running about here, there, and everywhere. And the last summer party that I was at, I nearly knocked a three year old over. So it wasn't a good thing. So yeah. That's just some of my tips. So yeah, this has been my tips for the, well, the normal sighted of you to hold a party for the visually impaired. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to give it a big thumbs up. I must just add thanks for all your help on Facebook or Twitter if you're sending suggestions for tips in this video. 
and I'll see you again in another video. Well now it's Luke's.